Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. During this program, you will see the steps in the construction and the adaptation of the spot welded matrix band. Also, the steps in the use of the Toffelmeyer matrix band will be reviewed. The advantage of the spot welded matrix band is that it's a custom made matrix band which can be used on a prepared tooth where there's a rubber dam clamp in place. This band is made from stainless steel bulk matrix material. The bands you will use in our clinic are partially made, but you should know that they're made from 7 16th inch by 2 thousandths inch matrix material. These are the steps in the construction of the spot welded matrix band. First, cut a length of 2 to 3 inches of bulk band material. Cut the material horizontally so that the width of the material is about 2 to 3 millimeters higher than the height of the proximal surface to be banded. You will have to estimate this height. Then put the two ends together and tack weld them on the spot welder. You should already know how to operate the Rocky Mountain 660 spot welder. If not, ask an instructor in pedodontics to show you how to weld with this welder. On the welder in the pedodontics clinic, you should use an intensity setting of 2 or 3. At this stage, take the tack welded band to the tooth that you want to band and seat it cervically. It will help you if you get into the habit of constructing the band so that the edge of the matrix material you cut with scissors is put occlusally. The machine cut edge will go through the contact more easily than the scissor cut edge. Another reason for doing this is that once the band is adapted, it should be put on the tooth the same way it was adapted. If it gets turned upside down, it may be difficult to decide which side was the occlusal. If you always construct the band with the scissor cut edge occlusally, you should be able to figure out the correct orientation of the band by looking for the scissor cut edge. Remembering this can prevent you from having to remake a matrix band. Put the band on the prepared tooth and seat it cervically. Now check to see if the height of the band is about one and one half to two millimeters above the height of the intended marginal ridge. If it is too short, begin again with a new piece of band material. If it is too high, trim the height of the band. Use a pair of how pliers to adapt the band to the prepared tooth. The how pliers have serrated beaks. One edge of the rounded beak is flattened. This flattened part should be directed cervically. Open the plier so that the plier extends from the mesiobuccal to the distobuccal line angles. Hold the band cervically with finger pressure and crimp the band with the how plier. The goal of this procedure is to make a band that is tight enough to adapt the band at the cervical, but not as tight as an orthodontic band. If the band is over crimped, then the proximal contour will be flattened. Hold the band tightly in the plier and lift the band off the tooth. Be careful not to fold the band over as you lift it occlusally. The next step is to spot weld the band along the crimped edge. Hold the band in the pliers and carry it to the spot welder. Make a weld at the occlusal and at the cervical of the band. Making excessive numbers of welds should be avoided because later you'll want to break apart the weld. If the band is welded all along the crimped edge, you will not be able to break the weld. The next step is to cut off the excess band material. Do not cut the band too close to the weld or it may break. Fold the remaining material over so that it's flush with the buckled surface of the band. Now there is no excess band material to become caught on the rubber dam clamp. Now put the band back on the tooth. The band should go on the prepared tooth exactly like it did before the band was welded. Occasionally, the band may seem higher than when you crimped it. This could be due to the band being welded too tightly. In this situation, the band will seat only as far as the cervical cavo surface line angle and stop there. 
It will look like the cervical is well adapted, but in fact the band will be resting on the cervical floor of the preparation. If this happens, the resulting restoration will be under-contoured and will be short of the cervical cavo surface margin. Instead of proceeding, if the band appears to be higher occlusally than when you crimp the band, stop and remake the band. If the band looks the same as when you adapted it, go ahead. Now the completed band is ready to be wedged, and once seated, other bands placed if you'll be packing amalgam into adjacent cavity preparations. If you're placing multiple bands, the wedge must be securely placed in order to separate the teeth sufficiently that contact will be restored after packing the amalgams. Adjacent amalgams are packed incrementally, a little in each preparation, so that each preparation is packed simultaneously. When the band is in place, check the following things. The band covers the cervical of the preparation. The band extends no more than 1.5 to 2 millimeters above the height of the intended marginal ridge. The band is stable on the tooth. The use of the Toffelmeyer band will be reviewed at the end of this program. Since most students are familiar with this matrix assembly, we'll go ahead to the removal of the bands, which is the last step in the packing sequence. The Toffelmeyer retainer is removed, leaving the wedge in place. A CR3 carver is used to break the weld on the spot welded band, or alternatively, the band may be cut with scissors. After the weld is broken, the wedge is removed and the bands removed, beginning with the most anterior band. Stabilize the marginal ridge with a moist cotton pellet as you rotate and remove the bands from the restored teeth. The remainder of this program will review the Toffelmeyer matrix assembly. If you're already familiar with the Toffelmeyer matrix, stop the program. If you want this review, continue. The Toffelmeyer matrix band uses a Toffelmeyer retainer and a Toffelmeyer preformed matrix band. In the picture, you see the two retainers you'll have in the pedodontics clinic. The adult size retainer is above and the child size below. The features of both are the same. The forward part of the retainer holds the matrix band. In the middle is the adjusting screw which tightens the band on the prepared tooth. At the rear of the retainer is the screw which holds the band into the retainer. The Toffelmeyer bands that you'll use are the number one, number 13, and number 14 bands. The number one band is the universal permanent molar band. The number 13 band is the universal primary molar band, and the number 14 band has elongations which may be trimmed for proximal amalgams and deep cervical floors. The band is curved so that when the ends are together, it simulates the taper of the proximal of the primary tooth. In this situation, the number 13 Toffelmeyer band will be adapted on the preparation on a primary first molar. Seat the band on the tooth and tighten the adjusting screw to adapt the band on the tooth. When the band is seated and the wedge is in place, you should repeat the checklist that was given before to judge the completion of the spot welded matrix band. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.